how to receive automated authorization using AirMap. Coming right up. But first, let's go to Dallas. Hi guys, so I'm in Dallas, Texas just briefly for a couple hours. So if I have some time this afternoon, what I want to do is film from the Mavic 2 Pro um, the downtown area of Dallas. Now this happens to be in a Class B airspace. And so what I've done is I've gone into AirMap and if you go into AirMap, I'll show you what that looks like, but there will be a authorization required notification down at the bottom of your screen. What that does is almost give you real time authorization to fly in certain areas at a very low altitude. So in this case, if I go into air map, it is at a altitude of 100 feet. So if I go up to the tower there, I should be able to fly safely around that tower in this airspace. Now the airport's, you know, probably 15 miles away, but it's still their, their class B airspace. What I've done is mapped out an area over the the grassy surfaces over there kind of behind the reunion tower um, kind of to the left of the tower and and I got almost near real-time authorization to do that so I'll show you show you what that process looks like it's very simple Okay guys, so let's go into AirMap real quick. <laughs> so let's first tap on the AirMap to open up the AirMap app. I'm going to come into my map and I'm going to zoom in over Dallas. And you can see the blue airspace there. That's the airspace around the Dallas area. There's quite a few different airports. Zooming in right over the downtown area in a place near Reunion Tower. You can see it's 100 feet is the uh, authorization required and that is the max altitude. So I'm gonna select the air map symbol in the bottom right to create a flight plan and I'm gonna start tracing out my um, the area that I wanna fly in. So I'm gonna avoid all the highways in the area and just look at that parking lot area and a, and a big field and the reunion tower kind of in the top part of that shaded orange area. And I'm just gonna adjust that as needed just to keep everything off the streets and over grassy areas pretty much you just have to tweak it a little bit and you can just you can either draw this out or you can use a circle using the, the little shape tool in the top right hand of the app Okay, then you want to hit next. And then you want to fill out the pre-flight checklist accordingly. So this was done actually ahead of time. So this is on December 13th and I did this several days earlier. I made two different flight plans, one for 11 a.m. and then one for 3 p.m. I made it for one hour duration. Just making sure you have the correct a.m. Altitudes at 100. It's got my personal information there. Name, what's your name? First and last name. And then you have to put your phone number in there so they can send you a text message. What's the expected visibility at takeoff? The default is three miles. I think I put yeah up to five miles. The drone weighs 1.99 pounds. I just put it at two pounds. Then you have to confirm that you're going to fly within visual line of sight that you have a Part 107 certification, um, anti-collision lighting, and that it's a sound drone to, to fly and that it's not damaged in any way or anything like that. All right, so then you wanna verify the phone number. I put in my personal phone number there, hit submit, and then very shortly you'll get a text message with a key. 
you see that pop up you get the little token key and then you put that in the box here and hit verify hit next it creates the flight plan so then you just want to review that actually the forecast shows nine miles of visibility and then you want to hit submit down at the bottom of the app okay so you hit submit it submits the flight plan and then a very short time later you'll get another text message just like that uh, controlled airspace is confirmed <laughs> parking lot behind that so one of the questions I have about all this is if I'm able to fly 100 feet in the air AGL does that include structures below me so if I fly 100 feet above the ground from where I took off I know typically you're able to fly you know 400 feet above the structure below you but in this case since I'm in class B airspace I'm not sure if the same rules apply it doesn't really specify that out and I didn't want to chance it today because uh, any kind of building that I go over down there gets into a pretty dense urban type environment unless I'm just going over big you know big flat you know four-story buildings it's not that big of a deal but I definitely didn't want to go any over the the small little area that I was in especially in class B airspace in an area that I'm not familiar with so that's why I just stuck at 100, 100 feet total today no matter what I was flying over so it was pretty cool. I would have liked to have gone over, up higher, but definitely, typically in the two to three hundred feet range. But um, if you guys want to check it out, definitely check that out. Don't be afraid to ask for authorization. Like I said, they they will authorize that in thirty seconds or less. Or if not, they'll send you a notification that something needs to be changed, and so you just go in and change your flight plan accordingly. And then they'll probably approve it after that. So just try it out and see what you think. Anyway, this is the tower. This tower is about, I think they said it was 560 feet tall, this observation deck. Great view out here. It's very cloudy today, but uh, but there's really nobody out here. It's actually pretty warm. It's probably 60 degrees outside. Anyway, guys, that's about all for me right now. As you can see in the background, as you can see in the background, there's a pretty big storm moving in. So I need to wrap it up and get the heck out of here. I need to catch a flight that I need to be at the airport in about an hour. So time for me to head back home. Guys, let me know what you think about this. If you've ever tried getting the authorization through the LAANC link, let me know in the comments also if you're out, if you're able to fly above the authorized limit. If there's something, if there is a structure underneath you. So if you have a 200 foot tall structure and your authorization is for 100 feet, does that mean you can go a structure plus 100 feet, or is it just the 100 feet? up to the edge of the structure. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'd really like to get a, a clear definition of that. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.